in uh, actually uh, uh, his dealing with uh, the supernatural uh, being the witches and uh, their dark nature because in history uh, they believe they they confirmed sorry that James the first as a Scottish king was a firm believer uh, uh, in the evils of black magic and in the supernatural and in the witches. So uh, uh, this is the first uh, uh, element to check, which is this historical background, historical uh, setting on which the play is set. We, ha we can trace the image of um, Macbeth based on James I, the Scottish-born king, and uh, the setting of the play being Scotland, and this element of the supernatural uh, as James uh, uh, I, as a real king, was a firm believer in the evils of black magic and the supernatural. Uh, also, um, uh, what critics say is that uh, Shakespeare published Macbeth in order to um, alleviate uh, the national turmoil. It means the political uh, uh, like unrest at that time. And uh, some other uh, critics um, believe that um, that the name of the play or uh, the title of the play was based on uh, the conspirate the conspirators um, and um, the, the, it, it was written to actually soothe uh, James the King. Um, Shakespeare also um, um, made some changes when it comes to the character uh, of Banco and uh, he made him uh, heroic and noble uh, more than he was in real history. So we have here uh, mainly Macbeth uh, and the title, as I mentioned, um, was set to alleviate certain um, turmoils, national ones in uh, Scotland by then. Uh, the difference is that um, Banco as a, as a character is made also noble. Uh, in history, uh, Banco didn't have uh, this much uh, fame, actually. Um, we have um, another, uh, actually, uh, point to consider. Um, the theme uh, in the play um, is actually uh, a theme of loyalty, loyalty, uh, people's loyalty uh, to uh, their country and uh, their king. So um, we have many representation, uh, uh, many representation, sorry, of uh, such uh, important uh, theme. Is that clear so far? Okay, good. So let's continue. Macbeth was written um, in the years or between the years 1603-1607, and uh, this is the real uh, um, year of publication. But uh, the fictional um, uh, setting, uh, this is uh, Scotland in the year, uh, four, um, sorry, uh, 1040, in the year 1040 in Scotland. And uh, Macbeth is um, actually, um, the Duke of um, Glamis and uh, a captain uh, in uh, Duncan's army. So uh, Macbeth's um, flawless, uh, sorry, uh, tragic flaw is uh, uh, his uh, ambition for power. He is overwhelmed by uh, his ambition for power and uh, he developed um, uh, much obsession with this uh, issue. Uh, 
so um, he presents a paradox between what he really wants and who he really is. So uh, rank-wise, um, uh, actually, uh, Macbeth is um, uh, is actually part of uh, King Duncan's uh, army, and uh, he had always this obsession with uh, with power. Um, and uh, this is actually a play uh, in which power did not uh, stop at the level of ambition. It turned to be a revenge um, play, or as they mentioned many times, it's a play based on blood. It's a blood play. And the word blood and uh, instances of blood and synonyms of the word blood were mentioned over 100 times in the play. So um, in terms of structure, uh, the play is um, one Renaissance Shakespearean uh, uh, tragedy uh, uh, play, and it has this uh, structure. So we have real people borrowed from history. Uh, they are made to feel like uh, authentic uh, human beings. And it has an important element in terms of structure, uh, which is psychological truth. It means the, the reader reads the play Macbeth and has in mind uh, uh, this background from history, uh, whether Scotland or um, um, uh, or Norway, um, it has um, this uh, overlap between uh, two sets. We have in mind Banco and we have in mind uh, Macbeth. So w w the, the borrowing from real history is actually present in the play and heavily present. Uh, we are reminded indirectly uh, about history, about um, uh, facts in history, about similarities uh, with the real stories uh, and uh, story in, uh, uh, in, in, in truth. So this is why it is considered uh, to be structured around certain um, uh, psychological truths. So let's talk, roughly speaking, about the division of the play. The play is made as any typical uh, Shakespearean tragedy uh, of five acts. We have uh, five acts. Um, they are divided uh, in order from act one to act five. Uh, act one has seven scenes, and it is considered quite a long exposition, a long act. Then we have um, four scenes in act two, so uh, a reasonably uh, a short uh, act. Act three uh, comes back with uh, six scenes. We have um, also three scenes in act four, so act four and Act 2 are almost foils. Act 2 has, seen, uh, has four scenes. Act 4 also has almost four scenes, three scenes and a half. So one of the longest um, acts is Act 1 with seven scenes. We have uh, Act 5 is also uh, um, a foil to uh, Act one, so uh, it is made of eight scenes. So this is a rich, structure-wise, rich and classic um, 
play a Shakespearean tragedy um, uh, play um, and uh, it is told to be uh, one of the best known um, of all of William Shakespeare's tragedies and um, it is a surviving tragedy. Uh, it was reproduced and uh, replayed uh, uh, many times um, after, um, whether in, in modern times, in contemporary times, um, and during his uh, lifetime. So uh, it was frequently performed, uh, whether in uh, small community theaters around the world or at a professional level. Um, and of course, um, Macbeth, uh, the play and the fictional title, as I mentioned, uh, is based on King Macbeth of Scotland. Um, and uh, it is often also um, seen as an archetype tale of uh, the dangers of power, betrayal of friends, uh, and uh, how ambition can be uh, fatal. It can cause death. Um, there are uh, many versions uh, associated with uh, Macbeth's play, and uh, they are all connected that uh, King Macbeth, whether in history or in the play um, is um, uh, obsessed and possessed cursed man um, and uh, many actors um, when performing the play wouldn't mention the name of the play uh, aloud they refer to it as the Scottish uh, play so um, in act one uh, scene one, uh, we are introduced uh, to the three witches. So the very first uh, element uh, presented in the exposition is that of the supernatural. Uh, they, they meet uh, Macbeth and this meeting is part of his fate, which he tried to resist. Uh, they discussed uh, many issues with Macbeth. Um, and um, uh, Duncan, um, uh, the king, uh, is told of uh, Macbeth's um, uh, heroism and uh, his uh, ambition um, to be elevated uh, in his title in scene two. In scene three, um, there is a first uh, turning point, which is a confrontation, again, uh, between Macbeth and the three witches. Uh, so uh, in this uh, confrontation or in this uh, meeting, the three witches uh, told him about his uh, future. So uh, uh, Duncan in Act uh, 1, Scene 4 is uh, showing gratitude uh, to both Macbeth and Banco, and uh, he considered them a role model in friendship. He even uh, announced uh, uh, his uh, hair, uh, his crown, uh, uh, to the throne in front of them. So he sees that they are actually um, an example of, uh, uh, of loyalty and of trust. Um, in scene five, still in act one, we have uh, the first uh, uh, like appearance of uh, Lady Macbeth. Lady Macbeth, as we are going to see, played a huge role in how insistent Macbeth uh, was about his role uh, and uh, his ambition uh, to be uh, more and more uh, powerful. So Lady Macbeth um, uh, is actually uh, presented for the first time in the play and um, she received a letter from her husband reporting recent events and she has plans of her own for Macbeth. Um, Critics say that uh, Lady Macbeth is uh, one of the most powerful uh, female characters in all of uh, Shakespeare's uh, uh, plays, uh, namely uh, tragedies. And um, it is actually an unusual uh, uh, role because at that time, and most of uh, the female characters in Shakespeare's tragedies um, were um, uh, women 
um, were actually subordinate women. Uh, they were submissive. Uh, they did not have a voice. They did not participate in the political life along with their husbands. They did not have uh, any leading uh, role, any leadership. They didn't have a say uh, uh, about certain issues in, in politics or um, uh, at home with their husbands. So she, she was presenting uh, actually um definitely uh, um, a, a power and um, a contrast um, and a difference uh, in uh, Shakespeare's plays. So um, we have in Act 1, Scene 6 and 7, uh, uh, Duncan arriving at Macbeth's castle, and uh, this is the first encounter between uh, Duncan and Lady Macbeth. Um, Macbeth, um, although brave, was easily influenced by Lady Macbeth because uh, he had certain plans at the beginning of the act and before the end of the act uh, in scene 7, he changed his mind again. Uh, he was obviously uh, convinced by Lady Macbeth to proceed as uh, she herself planned. She had plans at the beginning of the act uh, in uh, scene um, five and within uh, two scenes um, Macbeth uh, changed his mind and uh, he was convinced by what his wife told him. Now in act two um, we have um, a new um, character the appearance of a new character, uh, Banco's son, Fleans. And uh, actually, uh, in, um, in this scene, nothing really uh, happened except this uh, encounter uh, between Banco, his son, and, um, uh, and sorry, uh, Macbeth. Um, in scene two, uh, uh, scene two in Act two emphasizes scene seven, uh, Act one, because in Act two, scene two, uh, Macbeth uh, uh, carry out this plan, uh, uh, and uh, he sat with Lady Macbeth, and he went on and on, more convinced uh, by the proposal of Lady Macbeth. Um, in Act two, scene three. We have uh, two new characters, Lennox and Macduff, and uh, we have um, uh, the discovery of uh, Duncan's body. So uh, Macbeth takes revenge, and we have Malcolm and uh, Donald Bain making hasty plans to ensure their safety. So uh, uh, Duncan uh, was killed, and Macbeth was trying to take uh, revenge, and the accused characters were actually Malcolm and Donald Bain. So um, in scene uh, two, act four, uh, we have um, uh, Ross, uh, a new character, and an, a common old man. They are discussing... Uh, uh, the strange events taking uh, place. And um, we have also a new revelation, which is Macbeth's new title. Moving to Act C, uh, in scene one, um, we have uh, Banco uh, remembering the prophecies of the witches. He tries to remember what the witches told uh, Macbeth. And uh, Macbeth now is trying to make plans to get rid of Banco and Fleas. And this is the very first uh, revenge uh, that Macbeth uh, took in comparison to the whole play. So in the whole play, uh, uh, this is the first uh, real development in his character. So he's moving from a phase of bravery to a phase of uh, revenge to seek his own ambition. So he is emotionally changing. And um, 
in in Act two scene sorry in Act three scene two, uh, Macbeth is actually plan planning and plotting uh, against uh, uh, against Banco with Lady Macbeth. Um, the, the 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 rising action um, is, is supposedly to to go on and on, but uh, we discover that in scene three, act three, uh, Banco's uh, uh, sorry uh, Macbeth's uh, plan to plot and betray to plot against Banco and betray him did not go as he planned with his wife. So um, uh, Fleance, Banco's son. Uh, uh, was uh, realizing that uh, uh, there is a plot against himself and his father, so um, he uh, flew away and he escaped, he ran away, and this is uh, actually a turning point in the temperament of Macbeth. He was uh, um, uh, angered and um, he tries to organize um, uh, sort of a meeting, a plan to meet the witches again because he wants to learn more of the future. He can see that some events of what they told him uh, are not taking place as uh, planned. Um, in Act uh, 3, uh, sorry, in Act uh, 3, yes, Scene 5, uh, we have um, uh, Macbeth uh, meeting the witches uh, to make uh, further plans for the manipulation. So um, Macbeth was actually uh, feeling secure, knowing more about the future, but the thing is that the witches are trying to plot against him as well. They are making good use and uh, uh, regarding uh, his lust for power and his ambition. Um, in Act 4, Scene one, um, the witches uh, are meeting uh, Hecate before the arrival of Macbeth. And uh, Macbeth uh, is shown prophecies of the future later. In uh, Act 4, Scene 2, we have Lady Macbeth uh, receiving um, uh, a warning, but she still uh, consistent about her plans with Macbeth. Um, in, in Act 1, uh, scene, uh, in Act 5, Scene 1, uh, we have Lady Macbeth's strange behavior. So uh, she is not in good shape, and we have um, uh, Macbeth preparing for the battle. Uh, he believes in his um, ambition and in his power. Uh, he doesn't feel that he'll, he'll be defeated. And Lady Macbeth uh, has a psychological turmoil because uh, she's actually uh, suffering from delusion. So uh, in Act 5, uh, scene uh, 6 and 7, we have the battle commencing. Uh, and the soldiers, the English soldiers, uh, fighting. Um, Macbeth uh, fights also uh, the battle, believing himself, uh, uh, believing in himself, and believing also himself uh, not invincible. It means nobody can defy him. Um, so, in the final act and the last scene, Act Five, Scene Eight. Uh, Macduff confronts Macbeth. This is one of the last uh, confrontations, and Macbeth's death uh, is celebrated as the new king of Scotland is declared Duncan. So we have Macbeth's death uh, announcing um, uh, the the um, uh, the end, the tragic end, and the realization of the tragic flaw. Uh, he uh, confronted his fate, he wanted to know more about his future, the prophecies of the witches. Uh, they knew that he had a flaw, uh, his lust for power and his uh, dominance and his uh, uh, his ambition for, for power. So they manipulated him 
also emotionally. They made this idea sound more and more important in his mind. So uh, the tragic end is actually um, uh, awaited for because uh, uh, this is the tragic uh, end that any tragic hero uh, would uh, uh, go through since uh, it's a, a, a tragedy, a Shakespearean tragedy, namely. Is that clear so far? Okay, um, let's take five to uh, ten minutes. Uh, um, if you have uh, questions or if you want um, to uh, play and then we'll come back.
So welcome back, ladies. Yes, uh, getting back to Maram's question. Afnan has a question and Maram has a, uh, another question. So uh, getting back to Afnan's question, uh, you're asking if Lady Macbeth um, in Act 4, uh, uh, Scene 2, uh, has a warning. Um, and uh, from uh, whom? So we said that actually the appearance of Lady Macbeth was in Act um, 1, Scene 5, and uh, she had plans to help her uh, uh, husband to uh, follow his ambition uh, for uh, power. And yes, you're right. In uh, Act uh, 4, uh, in Act 4, uh, actually, we have uh, the reappearance of uh, Lady Macbeth, another reappearance for Lady uh, Macbeth uh, in uh, scene uh, two. Uh, no, we have Lady Macbeth uh, in scene two, act four. And she receives a warning, uh, but uh, she fell prey to Macbeth's plan. So it's actually, uh, it's not mentioned uh, from, uh, from whom, but presumably from uh, Lennox. So Lady Macbeth receives a warning. It's not Lady Macbeth, it's Lady Macduff. And she receives a warning, probably from uh, uh, from uh, Lennox, because he was the one arriving with the news uh, to Macduff. And still, she could not uh, actually uh, avoid uh, uh, Macduff's plan. So, um, Afnan, did I answer your question? For Mara, uh, we will. Uh, these are the basic themes. But more importantly, we need to know how to apply them. Uh, you're welcome, Afna. So uh, yes, uh, for Maram, these are uh, the basic uh, themes. We are going to develop them as well. And uh, we are going to uh, actually uh, link them uh, to the characters in uh, the play.
Okay, so let's start analyzing uh, the play. Now, we have already covered uh, the aspects of Shakespearean tragedy and how they are applicable uh, on Macbeth in certain aspects. We talked about uh, the acts and scene uh, uh, brief aspects and how uh, they are actually representing the dramatic structure of the Shakespearean tragedy. Now, the three basic aspects in the whole play, regardless of uh, the scenes and acts, is, this is like developing and running in the whole play. While you read the play, you have to pay attention to three important aspects in the play. First of all, uh, Lady Macbeth. Uh, this is actually um, uh, based on uh, literary criticism and critics, one of the most famous female characters uh, in, um, in, in, uh, in Shakespeare's tragedies, if not in all of his plays. And uh, she's a smart uh, woman, uh, extremely ambitious and brave. Um, however, uh, actually, uh, she's very, uh, uh, like, um, undone. She, she's, she's not, like, um, psychologically uh, fit. So she has delusions uh, by her ambitions, by her ambition, and uh, uh, she, her utterances are not actually uh, uh, quite balanced. So uh, this fact will add uh, to the turmoil and the downfall of Macbeth. Um, the most famous speech in this play uh, is the soliloquy of Macbeth. So when you read the play, you have to pay attention to uh, Macbeth's soliloquy. Uh, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this pretty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. So from tomorrow until the end of the soliloquy. So uh, this actually sums up uh, Macbeth's um, hopelessness um, as his uh, uh, tragedy and his downfall uh, are approaching. Uh, this is actually not only about uh, uh, his life um, and the downfall um, of his character towards the end of the play, but this is actually um, um, a soliloquy commenting on uh, life in general. Um, there is also the the fact of the supernatural, the element of the supernatural. Uh, we have uh, characters, and uh, namely Macbeth and his uh, wife, Lady Macbeth. Um, they are held by uh, actually uh, the, the, the the supernatural and the presence of the superstition. Um, and um, uh, we have also. Um, the, the, the encounter with uh, the witches, the three witches, and their prophecy to uh, Macbeth. Um, you have also, while reading, uh, you need to pay attention to um, certain techniques, uh, the use of images, and the language. Um, as you know, um, when you read the play at the beginning, uh, it might be quite difficult to understand it at first, uh, but um, you have to continue uh, uh, like reading, checking uh, the meaning of uh, some words, even if you have to get like um, one probably uh, uh, written in, in, in modern uh, English, if you can find uh, an electronic uh, copy. But remember that the, the language of the play is one of the reasons why it is popular, like most of his tragedies. And um, it's a very clear um, uh, language. It's uh, accurate, and uh, its uh, um, its images 
Uh, sorry, the um, the language is actually uh, also very um, uh, bold. It represents um, the images as uh, they are, and uh, you have also to pay attention to the recurrent uh, image of blood, uh, especially the blood on Macbeth's hands, uh, um, and um, the use of the same uh, metaphor um, all through the play. Um, the trouble also with the play is uh, it is not only a tragedy, but it's a psychological uh, drama. So um, most of the characters uh, do not see things so clearly. They are delusioned. And uh, in terms of technique, this play is full of foreshadowing uh, of shadows as well. Uh, it has sometimes um, uh, hazy meanings and shadowy ones. Um, you also have to pay attention to uh, the images of the dark and um, and the recurrent question asked by Macbeth when he keeps repeating, is this a dagger? So um, another image uh, in the play, the different images of strength and weakness. Um, uh, there is this uh, binary opposition um, of contrasting and contrasted images, strength and weakness, ability, inability, uh, good and evil. Um, So, um, I will stop here uh, today, and inshallah we'll continue on um, Tuesday, inshallah. Uh, I'll try to wrap up uh, the play, I'll talk about the themes, and uh, I'll talk about the symbols, um, and uh, we'll, we might need Thursday uh, to uh, finish it all, but I'll do my best to finish it on Tuesday. So if you have any questions, you can email them to me. And till I meet you, uh, till I, sorry, till I meet you uh, late, like uh, next time, take care and uh, wish you all the best. Uh, good luck also with your other uh, courses. I'm sure you have many courses this semester if you are uh, graduating. Um, this semester or the next one. So um, good luck and shall I see you on uh, Tuesday. Fiamanilla, ma'asalamu.